Purpose can be derived by really three ways, and we're going to focus mainly today on one way. But it can be really done around three ways. One is considering what you're really passionate and enthusiastic about as a child. I did an exercise about this recently, and we were asked, you know, what did you want to be when you grew, grew up? And I wanted to be a, um, a forest ranger. And the reason I wanted to be a forest ranger is that I had a best mate whose father was a forest ranger, and we used to go on you know, school holidays out there, and I thought, what a job! <laughs> go out and swim in the creeks and go through the bush. But it's interesting. It's just had a, it's had a profound effect on me. Like, Karen and I still live right on the bush at, uh, at Gordon, love living on the National Park. I hate... You know, I love... Uh, that's why I'm enthusiastic about the Green Zone. My, my logo features a tree because I really believe in the lessons that can come from nature. So that's one way, is, is, is looking at what we were passionate about. The second thing is an adversity you've been through. You know, something that you've found very difficult and applying that to what we, what we want to do. But the third, and what we're going to work on today, is really around a career highlight you're proud of. So I'd like everyone, if you would mind standing up, please. And I want you to get in, in, a, um, in a twosome, just two of you this time, and... Uh, you know, with someone you don't know that well. So, six someone else you don't know that well. <laughs> okay, this is, okay, so everyone just think of a career highlight you're proud of. So, give, give it some thought. So, what's going to happen is that you're going to take turns of interviewing each other. One person is going to interview the other for three minutes straight. And you're not going to have a chat. One person is going to continue, keep asking questions. So, channel into your... Lee Sales or Kerry O'Brien, and you just want to probe and probe and probe. And the person who's going to be sharing is going to be sharing what was their career highlight. And you're going to be asking, what were you doing? Who were you helping? And how do they benefit from your help? So they're the three questions. And then I want you to keep on probing why. Why they chose that particular one that would make a difference. And I'll give an example. I work with a... Um, a guy who nominated his career achievement as setting up a sustainable group of shops, sustainable energy shops, and a consultancy. And you know, I kept I asked him why he did that, and he said, "Oh, you know, it was the right thing to do." And um, he said, kept on probing, and he said, "Well, you know, the the, the resources are defined in the world, and and uh, you know, we have to do something about replenishing them." And I kept on say, asking why. And then all of a sudden he said, because I love bushwalking and I want my grandkids to experience it. And you can see when he said that, that the eyes lit up. So I want you to keep probing until the eyes light up. And, and as I said, the person asking the questions, we're going to flip it around, but the person asking the question just ask questions for three minutes. Is that all clear? Yeah. Let the questions begin. <laughs> <laughs> It's almost palpable when people start talking about things they're proud of. You can just see it happens everywhere, whether it's banking, public sector, healthcare. When people talk about it, it really raises the energy in the room. People, it just naturally motivates them. So, you know, my, my question would be how can you do more in the future of what made that so special to you? What, how can you do more of that? Um, the second thing is, is as I said, I was a headhunter for, for 15 years and I think I was a pretty good one. I reckon this is the most powerful recruitment question you can ask. Why? Why do you think it's the most powerful question you can ask? Because it gives you an idea of the essence of the person. Innate motivation. What they're passionate about. What they're passionate about, innate motivation. And um, you can't make that up. People can't fudge passion. Actually, I read this, um, I listened to this podcast with Eric Schmidt, the chairman of Google, and he said that they look for three things in people that come to Google. Obviously, they've got to be smart, that's a given. But they said they've got to be a learning animal, so they're real green and stuff. He said they've got to be passionate about anything. doesn't matter what it is, but they really believe <laughs> you can't fake passion. I don't believe you can either for more than 30 seconds. And, and, <laughs> and then uh, the third thing is, the third thing, the third success factor is 
will they pass the LAX test? And what that means is if you got stuck in Los Angeles Airport for six hours with that person, would you still like them at the end? <laughs> so what I want us to do today is to now, on your form, you're going to have a shot at writing the first draft of your purpose. Who th thinks they learnt something important about the other person that they already doing? Really, really important. And you'd be surprised how little workmates know this about each other. It's really important. So, and so as you write the purpose statement, I, I just want to write a, a couple that I have used about the work that I do. I help leaders create rituals to improve their resilience, mood and performance. Second one, I help leaders improve their team's emotional resilience so they can respond faster and better to change. So I'd just like to do a quick poll here, just uh, from just purely my selfish benefit. Which of those two statements do you think resonates more with you, which you think is more relevant to you? So I'd just like to ask you to raise your hand if it's number one and raise your hand if you think it's number two. Yeah, a bit more for number two, which is good, because I spent last week a whole day learning about um, how to write you know, your pitch or your purpose, and I came up with this one. So <laughs> I've got a few more like this one, but it's good to see that some still like the other one as well. I've also worked with a whole group of bankers, and you can see that they've written this in their own language. These are operations people in banking, and I help people and businesses solve problems and take advantage of opportunities. <laughs> and make money in the process. <laughs> <laughs> I provide advice and assistance to continuously improve our business. So the thing is, it's their language, it's their words. It's their words. Like I, I, I worked also with a group of financial planners and took them through this process. And at that time, there were some rogue financial planners out there who um, done the wrong thing to the point where they were almost embarrassed to introduce themselves at parties or socially as a, as a financial planner. But one of them, after going through this, said, I don't know what I do. I don't know my purpose. And it was, he's only young guy and I said, what is it? And I said, I help people be worry-free about money so they can live their ideal life. It was his language. And, but it reflected the benefits of what he was proud of, what he'd done in the past. So just take a moment now to have the first draft. Now just remember, progress is better than perfection. Write the first draft. You can always update this, but just have a, have a shot for about two or three minutes of writing the first draft on your... So there's, there's a place on your form here to, um, to write it out. On the uh, second page of your form, first draft of my purpose. So just remember, this is the first draft. You know, this will evolve. As you can see, mine's in the process of evolving now, more around, you know, the benefit that I hope that I deliver to clients. So, who'd like to, um, you know, read out the first draft of their purpose? You just say your name and then just to read it out. And Bribery and Corruption, there's a copy of uh, my latest book for the... The first three that did that. Who'd like to go first? Excellent, excellent, <laughs> excellent. So, so name and your purpose. Name and your purpose. Okay. Stand um, up, please. Oh, stand up. Yeah, you <laughs> <laughs> my name's Sharon Hudson. I'm going down to Brisbane today. Yeah. Thank um, you. Um, my purpose is I turn talent into performance at work and uh, I enable positive, positive workplaces. Congratulations. Thank please thank Sharon. individuals overcome work and personal issues, more personal issues, but they relate to work, um, to make them more positive, optimistic, optimistic, resilient and engaged. This helps our business to reach its potential and vision. Wonderful. Thanks, Pippa. And Tony? I've got two, two purposes. I help people and organisations tell their stories in a way that resonate with their desired audiences. I help organisations manage reputation risks through effective communications, aiming to turn a potential negative into a potential opportunity. Wonderful. Thanks, Tony. 
Thank you. And I think this is an extraordinary and wonderful definition of success by the amazing poet Maya Angelou who passed away, I think, last year. You know, success is liking yourself, liking what you do and liking how you do it. And, um, you know, when you live that purpose statement, I, I, I dare say that you tick all those boxes. You can just see people's energies rise when they talk about this and they talk about when they do live it. So. That would be my recommendation. At the end of each week, rate yourself out of 10. Do I, did I like myself this week? Out of 10. Did I like what I did? Out of 10. Did I like how I did it? Out of 10. If you don't like the answer, reset. You know, we turn off our computers and turn them on and reset. Well, we can reset our lives in the week ahead. Resolve to, uh, to do that.